Okay. So we'll pick up from, so we were looking at uh, how, you know, as parents, it's important that we create that safe, that protective, that nurturing kind of environment um, right there at the home. Right? Uh, and uh, and this is, uh, this is something wonderful that uh, we can do. And um, the fact is that God is helping, the Lord is, uh, the you know, Holy Spirit is leading us and empowering us um, to do that. So we, we actually, um, you know, we have the resources, we have the Word of God, we have the Spirit of God to, to lead us, uh, and empower us, to give us that creativity in order to do that. So the home can be a fun place. The home, home can be a very, uh, you know, a safe, uh, needs to be a safe place where children can express themselves and the child is free to express oneself um, and it's a place of learning it's a place of growth right so that is what a greenhouse does i'm sure you would have seen in a nursery um, where it's a it's a it's a maybe many times it's a glass house just to let the sunlight in um, but also it the temperature is controlled inside and uh, it keeps all the pests out and uh, um, you know there's a lot of nurture and care that happens to all those plants which are going growing inside the in, inside the greenhouse they are monitored um, and it's it's the best kind of an environment right so they grow strong and and then they are moved out and and transplanted right? uh, where they thrive right so uh, the the how the home you know can be uh, such a environment such an environment where there is uh, they can thrive they can there is love there is hope there is faithfulness they experience that there's peace and joy and respect and honor and, and all the you know all the wonderful things um, that they can experience firsthand right um, there's instruction there's nurture all that happens in, in that as atmosphere um, so it's a wonderful opportunity for us as parents to to provide that to provide that nurture, to provide that instruction, and to create that atmosphere, to host that atmosphere, so the children can actually grow up healthy and strong, physically, emotionally, you know, spiritually nurtured, and it's a wonderful, uh, you know, it's a wonderful opportunity for parents to do that, right? So, as parents, when we create this uh, atmosphere of environment of learning and growth and uh, development, um, you know, encouragement. So helping them to pursue, helping them to opening their eyes to discover uh, themselves, to discover God, to discover the, you know, the opportunities that are there to, to see that for themselves and so that they can be encouraged to pursue it. Right. Those all the options that are there, uh, maybe it's something that they want to do in life to, um, you know, the options that are there, the learning options, the uh, the maybe the uh, you know the employment options, uh, all those you know we can we can actually provide. We can direct them to those uh, resources. Like if, if if we are not experts ourselves, right? But to to provide that, to encourage that, uh, and um, and also it is a wonderful time. And the home is a wonderful place for parents to discover, you know, what the uh, interests of the child are. Where does the child lean to, you know, uh, with regard to uh, their interests, the learning uh, skills? See, not all children are the same, right? Um, just yesterday, I was looking at um, one of the uh, advertisements. Uh, it was a, not an advertisement, sorry, it was a feature about a particular uh, uh, product like we have a health drink called Bone Vita here, and I'm sure some of you know uh, uh, that. And Bone Vita, so so this Bone Vita is normally packed like a proper jar. It's a it's a drink. I mean, it's a, it's a thing that you add to milk and then you you know drink it. So cocoa and malt and all that. Uh, but Bone Vita did a did a campaign uh, in some of the metros metro cities. So the jar was actually packed or shaped like different things. You know, it was, uh, it, it, the packing and everything said bone vita, but it was shaped like a bar of soap. 
uh, you know, it, it was shaped like a cleaning liquid, you know, one of those things that you press and, you know, a cleaning liquid. It was uh, like heart pick or something. And it was, it was shaped in different forms uh, into different uh, things. Then you, you know, then you wonder, you know, is it really bone vita or is it, you know, is bone vita coming out as a, because everybody knows bone vita to be a health drink. Is bone vita coming out like a, like a soap now? Is bone vita, you know, is it a cleaning liquid now? Is it like a floor cleaner? You know, is it, a, you know, a hand sanitizer? You know, it's shaped in all those kind of containers. Um, so they did that. The thing is, when people were, uh, you know, curious and they looked at the container, then there was this message about the children saying, you know, uh, give children the independence and uh, to, to recognize their skills and their abilities and uh, not to treat them the same way, uh, treat all of them the same way, you know, in terms of what they should do and what they should learn and pursue and so on. So, uh, you know, as parents, sometimes we force, like, okay, this is what you need to do. This is what you know, I missed out on, so therefore you need to do it. You know, I didn't become a doctor, now you become a doctor. You know, I didn't become an engineer and I didn't have the opportunity, now you have to do that. Or, you know, since I'm in ministry, you need to be in ministry. You know, that's the thing, you know, as I'm a pastor, you definitely need to be a pastor. Uh, who will take care of the ministry after I'm gone? You, know, you need to go up and so therefore you need to go to Bible college. You know, we make all these mistakes, uh, forgetting that the child has a call, unique call of God, and it can be to it can be for anything, right? And maybe the Lord has placed certain abilities and skills and uh, talents and gifting that is that is unique for that child, in order for the child to pursue the plans and purposes that God has, right? So for us as parents, we need to recognize that in the children. I understand that, okay, even two, you know, if it's uh, two children in the same household, you know, each can be very, very unique and different, right? They might have some certain similarities, but then they are very unique and different. And God has, you know, certain things that he wants them to do. So, uh, so our responsibility as parents is to recognize those things that God has put in their lives, right? those skills, those talents, those abilities, to encourage them in that. And sometimes they uh, they don't see it, right? to encourage them, not force them to encourage them, to give them opportunities. Why don't you try it out? Um, maybe it can be a, it can be some class, coaching class to try out the thing, okay. Maybe they try it out and then they, you know, they give their best effort, but they're not in, you know, it's not their thing. Their heart is not in it. Don't force them to continue. Just leave it. Maybe they they try out something and then they they are really, you know, the the eyes really open up. Oh yes, this is what I want to do. Well, encourage them in it, right? So these are some things that we can do as parents. Uh, we also to you know build their confidence to bring out the best in them. Um, so so that yes, uh, you know. There's a lot of negative uh, things that are happening all around, and they also face a lot of negativity from their own peers, um, you know, in school, in college, as they grow up. Maybe they are in the workplace. They hear a lot of negativity, so it helps that when they come home to hear, uh, you know, the uh, yeah, to to encourage them and to hear positive uh, things. Um, that does not mean you're living in denial, you know, um, just saying positive things no matter what. You know, sometimes we do that, right? Wow, just because the child is doing it, we say, wow, that, even if it's not good, we say, wow, wonderful. No, to be to be real and to appreciate the effort, but um, at the same time to encourage them to do more, to do to be better. So Psalm 112 was one and two. Happy is the person who honors the Lord, who takes pleasure in obeying his commands. The good man's children will be powerful in the land. His descendants will be blessed. So this happens not automatically. It happens through the nurture, the encouragement, um, and uh, the, uh, the development that happens through the parents, right? To bring out the best, to draw out the best to help them discover the abilities that they have. Okay. 
it's also important to uh, prioritize and give time as the child is growing up, as the child blooms, um, to have its you know individual personality, to spend time talking, have conversation. Uh, this is what uh, we read the last chapter in Proverbs. We see that this is a the advice that the King Lemuel's mother gave him. Okay, many times we, you know, just as an aside, many times we think Proverbs 31 is written by a man to, uh, you know, to put down women, you know, but it's actually a very liberating, you know, chapter which talks about, which is, which is the advice of the mother, right, uh, giving to the son. So uh, Proverbs 31 talks about that. The, the, but what we, we, you know, we need to notice is that there was this time or this opportunity that a mother took, or maybe it was a constant thing, it was a regular thing that the mother took in order to, in order to converse, in order to have that interaction with the son. Right? And so these are the words which are penned down by the king, but it's based on the advice the mother had given him. So, oh, give that time, and and it can be wonderful. Okay, it can be a enjoyable experience. It it need not always be. It should not be negative. Okay, let me just show you how to better yourself, or you know, these are the five problems that you have, or the five mistakes that you are making. And the child will not want to have conversations anymore. Right? The child will say, "Okay, enough." You know, the, the minute you say, "Okay, let's sit down and talk," the child will say, "No, please, I've had enough." I don't want to continue, right? So, um, you know, uh, me and my daughter, we we actually have a, like a we do a father daughter date. So we go out and have a meal sometimes uh, just on our own, just the two of us. We we do go out and watch uh, some good movie together. Uh, we talk about it. So this that's the time where we we you know eat out. Um, so we talk about several things. Uh, things that are going good in her life, things that are bothering her. Um, so I, when where I also get to talk about, share about, okay, how I was when I was in school and college, things that bothered me. And uh, so, you know, it's uh, it's. It, I look forward to those times because we are able to share each other's heart and um, understand and also learn what's happening in each other's lives and uh, so we take some and we have some great fun you know to go to places uh, it's usually over a meal and we just enjoy you know discovering new places or you know going to the same place where we have a favorite things all that you know happens so as parents we need to uh, make that time to do that right? maybe you know saying okay i don't have the resources to go out and have them it need not be you know, sometimes it is just, uh, you know, just watching a sunset, right? Uh, so, and then saying, hey, let's take a picture of that. And then spending the time, maybe it's just a half an hour, you know, having a cup of tea and watching a sunset. And, you know, look at that color, even as a, especially during the pandemic time, this happened, you know, even as the sun was going down, notice that change in color of the skies. And then you think that it's really gone down. And then suddenly, you know, you see, the colors change, brilliant colors, as it's just uh, going down. So, you know, we notice all that, and you know, take pictures and and things like that. So we do so these lead to teachable moments. Right? These lead to teachable moments, meaning the conversation steers, and you are at that moment where you can actually, uh, you know. The child is also in a place to receive instruction, or the child is asking questions. Um, the son or daughter or children are asking questions, saying, "Okay, I want to know. I have a problem with this. I'm struggling to understand this. Why is it?" So these are these are teachable moments. These lead to teachable moments where we can actually instruct. We can. From the word of God, this is what God's word says. So we are ready. Um, we come to a place of uh, 
being receptive, right? So use those moments. Those teachable moments should not be wasted. Right? Instead of pushing things down the children's throat and saying, do this, do this, do this. These are teachable moments where the child is, uh, children are ready to receive, right? Okay, then we also nurture faith in the child as parents, right? Um, means that show them from the word, uh, teach the children the word of God, the works of God, share your testimony. Um, you know, that's one thing for us to understand uh, or to think, you know, does the child know, you know how I came to know the Lord? We sometimes take it for granted, right? Or they hear it through someone else or maybe, you know, in a, in a meeting where you're, you know, if you're in ministry, you know, you're sharing somewhere and then the child gets to know and, oh, really? I didn't know that. I, my father never told me, my mother never told me. So um, we need to intentionally, you know, share again our faith, how we came to know the Lord, how the Lord came through and, and other things like what you learned and how there was a revelation. So all these stories, you know, uh, we have in our journey with God, teach them. Nurture faith, build up faith in them. Build up their life skills, like we saw already. Teach them about um, you know the values. Teach them about uh, living a pure life, right? Uh, yeah, life skills about sex, about purity, about marriage. Um, you know, sometimes they have a different view of marriage altogether. Why should we keep oneself oneself pure? Or uh, all my friends think this. You know, this is what they take. You know think about marriage or you know they don't want to get married or you know why 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 can't people live together and all these kind of things teach them from the word of god right um, understand that they go through different ch changes physiologically they are going through changes emotionally they go through changes um, and as they go through changes they face certain temptations you know physiological changes they face temptations and um, and uh, we need to you know, help them with that, uh, talk to them about marriage, uh, talk to them, prepare them right, uh, for marriage, um, and show them from the Word of God. And above all, just coach and inspire, inspire them, right, um, and leave a spiritual legacy for them. Right? As parents, uh, we ought to do that. It's our responsibility to do that, to leave a spiritual legacy. Actually, you know, if you look at, um, it's interesting, right, to look at, uh, is it Second Timothy? Yeah, if you look at Second Timothy, chapter 1, and verse 5, okay, so this is what uh, Paul, Paul says. So Timothy says, you know, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois, Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. So something has now this family has uh, ha, some had had something hand over across generations, and what was that? Their faith in God. Okay. So when it comes to leaving a legacy, a legacy or inheritance, right? Uh, think about the spiritual legacy or the spiritual inheritance that you can hand over so that it can go from generation to generation. Right? Your walk with God, your testimony, your encounter with God, the revelation that you receive, um, to pass it on, to impart that um, to your, you know, to your uh, offspring. Uh, so that can be a very precious thing, to leave a spiritual legacy. While we are called to um, um, leave it or pass on, Isaiah 59, verse 21. And sorry, uh, just before going there. So we see that this has happened here. Lois, Jonas, and Timothy. Three generations. Grandmother, mother, son. So the faith in God, you know, has been passed on. Right? Um, so Paul recognized that. And he said, and he noticed that. And he kind of uh, shared that with Timothy. And he said, I have this grand faith that was in your grandmother, your mother, and I'm persuaded is in you also. Um, so, uh, yeah, the next verse uh, we're going to look at is Isaiah 59, verse 21, where the Lord says, As for me, says the Lord, Isaiah 59 and verse 21, 
this is my covenant with them my spirit who is upon you and my words which i have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth nor from the mouth of your descendants nor from the mouth of your descendants descendants says the lord from this time and forevermore right so leaving a legacy of god's word of god's ways of encounters with god testimonies right giftings and all that and how to move in the gifts how to you know uh, spend time with him meditating on the word all those things you know, don't leave it to someone else or don't leave it uh, you know just hanging there saying oh, you know someday my child will learn or uh, someone will teach my child no you know, what we have learned what we have understood pass it on right okay so that's about uh, parenting um another thing that we can look at uh, as parents uh, which is closely you know in line with what we saw is the family altar and intercession you know um as uh, like we said that this is a greenhouse we are nurturing providing an atmosphere where there is spiritual nurture as part of the spiritual nurture is that when the family comes together to worship the lord together okay um especially when it comes to ministry homes you know the child sees that okay this is what is happening in church this is what is happening outside my my you know my parents are leading this doing this ministry but in the home it is it is not there in the home it is void right so it's important that it's the other way around it starts at the home so having a family altar and intercession time of prayer Okay. Uh, some suggestions you know to do this it's um, you know, the thing is sometimes it's you know it is uh, long drawn it is at a time you know this family time together to pray together to read the word together and uh, you know have a time of uh, you know maybe even a discussion it's at a time when it's not convenient you know many times we it's maybe it's convenient for the one who's leading but the others are tired others are sleepy and uh, it's at a time when it's uh, it's totally inconvenient for the others so it's it's dreaded you know whenever you say okay can we the, the, all they they're thinking is can we finish so that i can sleep can i finish that i can you know do something and so so have the family together have a team meeting and say okay when are we going to do this what is the best time and and then stick to it and do it and put someone in charge of reminding everybody okay this is prayer time let's pray uh, everybody's alert everybody has the time there no other um, you know sometimes we think okay can there be a time like that yes uh, we can, if we plan right um, and keep it flexible keep it spontaneous keep it interesting right sometimes it could be just sharing okay I, what are some things that we can thank god for today what happened in your life so everybody goes around sharing that uh, and sometimes it is just maybe just singing and worshiping and sometimes it's like okay everybody shares a prayer point and we pray it could be that or you know keeping it simple keeping it uh, fun keeping it uh, spontaneous helps right um, but there could be some things that are consistent maybe you're reading through a particular portion of scripture you could read that or maybe there's a daily devotional that uh, you're following you know a reading that you're following um, well that's fine but the thing is to to not let boredom or to for it to become very very mundane and heavy and oppressive right sometimes it's like that it's like oh god why uh, so people begin to and as a child is growing up the child is dreading those family um uh, times of prayer like because it's long drawn it's it's uh, it's tiring right so so praying for the family you pray for the family you pray for the spouse and these are the things that um, what are some specific things pray for the spouse's growth uh, pray for you know uh, for the purpose we, you know we saw all that earlier also uh, speak god's word declare what god 
says over your spouse, you know, over your husband or maybe over your wife, declare that. And you can do the same thing for the children also. Declare wisdom, success, blessing over work and ministry. Um, when it comes to praying over children, pray for their spiritual growth and uh, use scriptures which um, you know which we see uh, there are some of these apostolic prayers which uh, Paul prayed over the church right we see uh, you know one such example is of course Ephesians 1 and uh, if you just look at uh, one uh, portion and how we can pray that and speak that over our children uh, Ephesians 1 and we read uh, 15 uh, Verse 15 onwards, where Paul prays, uh, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power and so on so pray pray for spiritual understanding pray that they may um, that the lord give them a revelation the knowledge of him spirit of wisdom and revelation the eyes of the understanding will be open that they may see you know, these are wonderful things to pray for our spouse pray for our children right Pray for their growth in God's purpose and plan that they will grow in the gifts, the use of the gifts, that they will not neglect the gifts, that they will you know, discover the call and be faithful for the call uh, of God and uh, faithfully walk in the anointing of God in their lives and uh, that they will not you know, let anything be undone but fulfill the call of God. It requires obedience, it requires endurance and strength and and a sense of purpose and vision. So we can pray right from their young age, right? Uh, Lord, let them let them walk and fulfill the purpose that you have for them and the destiny that you have for them, right? And uh, so declare the word of God, declare the promises of God uh, over the children, right? Uh, all for the destiny. Uh, maybe God has revealed some things to you about their destiny and the Lord would do that. Well, this is what I called him or called, called her to be. And so you speak that out. Don't force it over their lives, but you speak it over their lives. Pray that over their lives and, uh, and talk to them about it and say, okay, you know, what is God? Ask them, you know, what is God speaking to you? What is God, um, you know, what do you think God is uh, speaking to you about right now? You know, some of the things can be like, so what is God saying right now? Uh, um, you know, some response could be, I don't know. I don't know what, I have no idea. So are you reading your Bible? Are you praying? Uh, not really. Okay, so when you start doing that, what's stopping you? I don't know, sometimes I'm tired. Sometimes I, you know, I just lazy, just don't make time. Okay, so can I can I remind you? Right? Can I can I remind you every day is it okay? And at this time I'll just tell you it's it's time to read the Bible. Uh, and then you'll know, can I remind you? Yeah. Would you like to put a reminder on your phone so that it's you know it's time to you know get up and read? Whatever, you know. So it, there's a gentle uh, reminder and, and based on the age, of course, if they are young adults, you could do that and to gently nudge them into seeking God, the purposes of God, the plans that God has for their life, to seek them on their own, right? So it's only so much that we can do as parents, you know, we can seek God's call for their lives, we can ask God, but then they need to do it themselves. Right? Uh, and it's so much better if they do it themselves and, uh, and the Lord gives them the conviction and writes his vision upon their heart and they're able to pursue that. So, so much better if they do that, right? And sanctify, consecrate uh, everything that God has given them to be used for God's glory and the purposes of the kingdom of God, right? Talk to them about it. And uh, yeah, and also bless whatever they are doing you know, presently. Um, their future 
and also teach them you know teach them to stand for themselves pray for um, you know for their uh, prayer protection over their lives spiritual warfare so on um, declare that and uh, and to also enable them to stand on their own stand on guard be alert uh, you know and we can step in and intercede on their behalf and do warfare on their behalf whatever challenges that they are going through and preempt preempt the attacks of the evil one preempt the schemes of the evil one um, not just the children but also the spouse and preempt and pray protection over them right um, sometimes well the child is yet to make a decision on his own or her own you know the the child grows under the the faith and everything uh, of the parents and then there comes a time when the child needs to make a decision uh, on his own or her, her own make a choice to follow the lord right so there are no like somebody said right the only children of god no grandchildren right of god so every child needs to make a decision for himself herself to follow christ to be born again it cannot be the faith of the parents so maybe they are not making that choice maybe they're not making the decision yet right um you can even lead them to christ pray for their salvation maybe for whatever reason uh maybe we were bad examples whatever reason they are not come to a place of making a decision yet so we pray for their salvation maybe they are born again and then they have gone astray right? maybe through the college years maybe the young adult years maybe they are you know kind of slowly drifted away cooled down in their faith drifted away um from the lord from his ways pray for them do warfare on their behalf pray for them you know isaiah 49 25 thus says the lord even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible be delivered for i will contend with him who contends with you and i will save your children so we have this promise promise from god right so don't be discouraged and say i don't know what will happen you know i don't know what will happen to my child i don't know what will happen to my children um don't be but be encouraged and uh, continue to pray for them and uh, let your faith and expectance expectation for them to come back to, for them to return you know be there always okay here are some things you know there could be deception you know spiritually right um deception some of these values and and uh, you know thought processes view world views that are their atheism existentialism humanism uh false religion you know you can come against it in the name of jesus and cast down and the prayer protection uh, over their minds um over their lives right um and and as we as we do this and it's important to keep our communication our channel of communication our lines of communication open like give them the permission to ask questions no matter what i give them the permission to come and uh, tell what is happening in their lives right so that is that is very very important because um why should they come and ask questions if you're going to not answer if you're not going to be interested or if you're going to very get very very upset you know if they're going to ask about you know uh, you know about maybe uh, a gender you know the, the whole confusion that is happening about sexuality gender about live in relationships about um, uh, you know all that is you know that is happening currently in the world and why should they come and ask you as parents uh, these questions if you will not listen if you will get upset and angry that they are going to they are asking these questions or you know just say okay you keep quiet uh, you you know uh, you will you will get to know later when you grow up they will not ask right if there's one such response or two such responses they are not going to ask in future they are going to make up their own mind 
things are, you know, chances are that they're going to ask their peers, uh, you know, who are of the same age, right? and they have not really, maybe it, it'll be good if it's, if it's godly counsel, but most times it's it's not, right? Um, so we need to keep that communication open. We need to give them the permission to come and ask us, right? Yeah, while we do offer you know, to cast down a stronghold and uh, everything that, that is trying to bind, that is coming against them, uh, everything that's coming against the word of God, truth of God's word in their lives, while we do this, we need to keep uh, lines of communication open. Okay. Um, yeah, we can do this uh, as we pray for them, invite the Spirit of God to bring about conviction. Invite the Spirit of God to bring about conviction of sin, righteousness, and judge, uh, judgment, because that's what the Holy Spirit does. The Lord Jesus says in John chapter 16, and we read that the Holy Spirit, when He has come, He will convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. Uh, pray for God to draw near, draw them to Himself. And uh, the Lord Jesus said, you know, when I'm lifted up, I will draw men to myself draw people to myself um, and uh, just pray say lord you know you draw them lord through your love you draw them lord through your grace and draw them to yourself let there be encounters let there be you know sovereign encounters in dreams and and uh, you know at times when they're sleeping and um in dreams and lord you speak to them you draw them lord let there be sovereign encounters and i just pray that uh, that their hearts will be um hearts will be made tender to respond to your drawing to respond to your voice, right? Um, and also pray that God will bring them to repentance, knowledge of the truth, uh, and so on. And and these you know, the other prayers that we prayed. Um, so continue to declare the promises of God. Continue to pray uh, the word of God. You know, and as parents, uh, this is our responsibility. You know, this is something that we we need to do right and also understand you know just like how we saw that as um you know as a couple like, uh, as a married couple just like how we were we are as individuals we have the call as a couple you know we can can serve the kingdom of god and as a couple like as a couple we can serve the kingdom of god and be a uh, and contribute to the kingdom of God and be part of you know the growth and expansion of God's kingdom. Um, we can do that same thing as a family as well, right? Um, we can do that as a family. So, some of the practical things that we need to do is to is to really establish this. And I just believe that sometimes, you know, this this is is in the danger of um, diluting this particular aspect of Christian life. Right? That is to be in the house of God, or I would say, being in the church right? every Sunday, corporate worship, coming together to worship. Right? So, if the child does not see it in us as parents. That we are not there, or when we say, "Okay, it's okay," I'm not going this Sunday for whatever X, Y, Z reason. Um, then the child will most likely, or the children will most likely, not put that in a in their own lives, or not treat that as priority in their own lives. Now, Hebrews ten talks about that, right? Uh, not to give up the assembling of oneself uh, as much as personal relationship with the Lord. I mean, that's a very important, the most important thing, our personal walk with God, uh, our personal relationship with the Lord, our personal times with the Lord. We know it's that has to be a number one priority. As much as that's important, so also is our corporate, you know, as families, getting together as a body of Christ in the local church, right? So uh, if you want to do something for the kingdom of God, the best thing is to do it as uh, you know, as an expression of the local church, serving in the local church. So, one of the practical things is to do this. And I remember, well, growing up, 
we used to go on vacations and uh, like with my grand grandparents uh, and almost every summer there'll be some place that we would go uh, or sometimes the same place you know repeatedly every summer and uh, so when we go my grandfather uh, he was not very vocal as a christian but then this is something that he did even if we were visiting a place uh, maybe and if it happened to be a sunday he would make it a point to find out you know we all used to go to the anglican church csi church at that time so find out what church was there and this is before the days of google before the days of you know typing in churches near me and finding out so this is before all those days you know word of mouth find out uh, get directions from people um, what is the time church time and uh, sometimes you know he would also make that effort to go there the previous day you know or some other day just to see okay this is how because a new place and we are just visiting that town that city to go there and say okay this is where it is to look at the board and say okay this is the these are the this is the timing okay maybe we can go for the second service which is starting at this time so it for them it was very important that we as a family that we as individuals we are in church to worship together on sunday so so like whatever understanding he had this was very important and that was kind of passed on you know to us as a family so uh, so it's important to be in church you know otherwise it feels a little strange why are you not in church on sunday why are you not serving in church why are you not helping out you know as we grew up so uh, establish that uh, understand that we belong to the family of god and as much as we are a family we are an individual unit we belong to the family of god it is god's household as paul writes in first timothy 3 verse 15 and we should know how we need to conduct ourselves in god's household or god's family the family of god which is the church of the living god okay the other thing is also to serve in church right now we know that no church is perfect sometimes the mistake we do as parents is to criticize the church, the people, the leaders. And we do that on a Sunday afternoon during lunch. You know, today this message was like this, today this. And the child is listening, you know, listening to all that is happening, processing all that is happening. And sometimes, you know, the thing is, as the child is growing, the child is not mature enough to understand certain things. Now we might say, okay, this should not have been done, and you know, um, this was wrong with the church. And then we we objectively, you know, look at okay, yeah. And then we come to a place of saying, okay, fine, you know, I know God will take care, whatever. And then we continue. But then the child does not. For the child, this has made a very, you know, deep impact. And so the child is forming its own conclusions about church, about you know anything that is to do with church or people. So sometimes child grows up saying, I don't want to be in church. Why? Now, subconsciously, this is what the child has been hearing, all negative things about church, negative things about ministry, negative things about, uh, and also seeing what is happening, right? So doesn't want to serve in church, doesn't want to help out in any way. Okay, so when the family serves in church, the child gets to, experience firsthand what it is like to serve in church sacrificially maybe sacrifice of the time sacrifice of resources um you know uh, giving up on sleep maybe you know when the whole world is sleeping in um staying indoors the the believers are out early and going to church and serving and doing all that so uh, it's something healthy that is happening for the family, for the child. Right? And as a family, um, you are serving in whatever way. Right? Uh, it could be it could be spiritually ministering. You know, maybe somebody's sharing the word, maybe leading in worship. It could be you know in the administration of it in terms of you know arranging the physical aspect, the chairs, cleaning the church, getting things in order, whatever it is right so so 
first Peter 4 verse 10 as each one has received a gift minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God so there is we are ministering to one another and that setting to minister the ideal setting is in the local church when we serve one another right, in the local church um, well and uh, the other thing is when there's there can be a good mentoring um, relationship yeah um, we have a question. Yes, Paul, go ahead, please. Um, Paul, do you have a question? Uh, uh, no, sorry, it was accidental. Sorry. No problem. No, okay, okay. I saw your hand put up, so that's why I asked. Okay. Okay, no worries. So, uh, you know, the mentoring. Um, so we see Paul giving you know, different instructions to older women and to teach younger women and also um, to train uh, in, 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 in life, you know, in, about marriage and life and parenting and all that happens. Uh, so that can happen in the church. So that can happen for the people in the family to, to help others, other families. Right. So, in in effect, there is impact in the kingdom of God for the people of God. So, as a family, uh, the parents are helping mentor other maybe other younger couples, other younger families who are just starting out and uh, who can learn so much from life and experience that uh, you have had. Right, as a family, there's something that you know. If you're a younger couple or a younger family, then you can learn from the old, and that happens in the setting of the local church. Uh, life groups again are wonderful ways. People call them different names, maybe a house group meetings or uh, you know small groups, and and also for families to get involved in missions, right? To serve together in missions. You know, we've had several instances of uh, uh, you know couple serving together in missions and it's a wonderful experience to do that okay also about generosity kind kindness and tithing and and uh, supporting the local church um, is is quite important and when all this happens you know, there is something that's developing which is to have a kingdom mindset okay to go beyond the church to see the church of the living god and you see that, yes, uh, you know, this is the kingdom of God is expanding. The kingdom of God is being impacted. The kingdom of God is growing. And uh, uh, the kingdom of God is uh, uh, going forward. Right. So the Lord Jesus says, seek first the kingdom, the rule and reign of the king and his righteousness. And so we become kingdom minded in our life. And uh, as uh, as a family, we become kingdom minded. Our priorities, uh, everything, you know, we are kingdom minded in the things that we do. Um, if we're not living for ourselves, you know, it's no more I, me, myself. But uh, you know, we are living for the kingdom of God, and which is the greatest thing that we can do. Okay. Now there are a couple of things about uh, when children become your friends and also uh, you know uh, enjoying the rest of the journey a couple of more topics which you can read yourself these are you know quite light uh, things that you can read by yourself and i'm sure it'll be a you know useful read as well things that we can put in practice when it comes to this course right so that brings us to the end of uh, this course christian marriage and family um, now what is important is uh, you know to revisit some of the things that we have uh, gone gone through okay uh, i'm sure that not all everything sticks to us uh, we tend to forget so it's to uh, to revisit revisit this uh, there is also, um, you know, if you can go to uh, the resources section, I'll put the link in the stream. Uh, the entire series, uh, along with PowerPoint, along with the notes, is there on the church website. So I'll I'll share the link with us, and uh, please feel free to, you know, at leisure 
take some time to go through it and also maybe share it with others also you know and it will definitely make a big difference in our own lives and the lives of uh, others right so i just want to wish you all the best those of you uh, your marriage uh, marriages and uh, you know all your families uh, i just want to wish you all the best and uh, may god you know lead may god be the center of each one of our uh, each one of your lives as well right okay thank you god bless uh, we'll meet again in the next uh, next session god bless you bye bye